programs and try to do something about acid rain and sponsor a bill supporting increased funding for solar energy. You know what? By the next election, anybody who would run against me, and I mean anybody, would have the combined funds of all those people to defeat me, and he would, too. And I'm not even saying it's wrong. Because when you get that far out in front of public opinion, that's the way they let you know. So I do what everybody else does, from the lowliest congressman right on up to the president of the United States. I pick a few crucial issues that I think are crucial, a part of your whole, and I persist and persist until I get somewhere if I'm lucky. And for the rest, I mark time, I wait, I go along. I, I trade off. But this is why I don't vote, excuse me, it's what we've been talking about. You get people to eat less red meat, and then you do something like paying off the farmers, buying up surplus butter and subsidizing its price. So if we don't get a heart attack one way, you'll just find another way to give it to us. Well, I agree with you. We wouldn't contradict each other, or we wouldn't contradict ourselves so much if we didn't do things piecemeal. But, you know, there's something a little scary, maybe something even a little cruel about your theoretical exigency here. I mean, are you going to be the one who tells everyone what's good for them? Are you going to tell a farmer that there's something wrong with the goals that he and his family have pursued for generations and then, what, just shut them down? You know, maybe we are beaten up all day long by private interests, but at least our government is now stays close to what people perceive to be their needs. Look, the world changes faster than people's perception of it. Would it be a challenge for a great political leader to bridge the gap, to inform, to allow us to feel responsibility. Anyway, the people don't trust you politicians anymore. At your last election, only 50% of them even bothered to vote. Yeah, getting them back would really require a politics of the impossible. What a great campaign slogan. Where were you when I needed you? <laughs> I'd vote for it. Oh, good. I get the poet vote. Ah, politics of the impossible. Yeah, you might get my vote, too. Oh, uh, great! Add to that the support of all well-informed but non-participating women living on medieval islands. There's no victory. that make me angry? Oh, probably because they don't want to have anything to do with us. They don't believe in us. There isn't really any reason why they should, Jack, except their own eventual aging. Nah, I don't even notice where they are. They think this is the movies, but this room is absolutely contemporary. Everybody's got a torture chamber now. They don't even notice. Are you going to say this is part of your crisis of perception, too? Yeah, or maybe we're all led a little towards death, like wolves to the weak. Or maybe people are just shits. Hmm? You'd like to blame this on Descartes. I'd like to blame it on anybody, but this is such a part of human history. Well, I don't know about Descartes, but I do know that Francis Bacon presided over the witch trials of King James I at a time when millions of women were tortured or burned for practicing folk medicine or worshipping pre-Christian goddesses or simply because they were unusual. I would probably have ended up on the stake myself. See, I don't believe it was a metaphor when Francis Bacon wrote that nature had to be hounded in her wanderings, bound into service, made a slave. He even said that scientists, with their new mechanical devices, had to torture nature's secrets out of her. Did you notice? How he uses her when describing Mother Nature? Hmm? As if nature was nothing but a witch? Yes. It's actually fair to say that this room represents a crisis of perception. But this room was here for a long time before Descartes and Bacon. Violence goes on no matter how mankind understands the world, doesn't it? And exploitation. 
course, we'd all like to think it would be different if we saw things differently. It hasn't. Modern science, technology, business done exactly what Francis Bacon preached, tortured all planets. Didn't we just implement the old patriarchal idea about man dominating all? I don't know, Sonia. Let me be the devil's advocate here for a minute. How much have we really tortured and handed the planet? I mean, you could say not much compared to what the Ice Ages did to the world, for example. And who says that nature can't cope? We're all scared to death about the disappearing ozone layer, but we only started studying ozone levels about 10 years ago. It could be that this, these so-called holes in the atmosphere have been appearing and then disappearing again since the beginning of time. Couldn't it? Could be that nature has a healing mechanism that we don't even know about. It could be that this hysteria about ultraviolet rays is nothing more than that, just hysteria. That's exactly what he said about the German forests only a few years ago. And look at them now. More than half of the trees in the Black Forest are dying. We can't explain it away any longer. We simply cannot take the risk. And right here around this island, the tides are slowing down. Maybe because of silt building up from garbage being dumped in the bay or from the overuse of fertilizers. Lakes can die. Entire oceans become polluted. Topsoil, forests, water, poisoned, dead. Things can change so fast in the hands of man. Nature becomes fragile. Rain becomes acid. I agree with everything you said, but why this patriarchal fixation, hmm? I mean, in Salem, those women witches were betrayed by other women. Phyllis Schlafly, a woman, has written that God's greatest gift to mankind is the atom bomb. I mean, these are women. Why can't you just say what's patriarchal is what's evil in both men and women and let it go at that? There's plenty of that to go around. Unless, of course, you happen to believe that these women were brainwashed by men like Patty Hearst. Why is this gone for? Look, there are two great principles functioning in this entire living world. The male principle, pick the adjective, the aggressive, dominating, whatever. And the female principle, nurturing, caretaking, gentle, whatever. What I am saying is that these two principles may have been in a rough balance, but now the men, and yes, I do think it is the men, have created the tools, the weapons, both intellectually and physically, to bring these two principles way out of balance. We have been placing mechanistic tools in the hands of power-oriented patriarchal people. I'm saying you men are out of control now. And I, you, we all, we, we are the victims. So what's the risk? What's wrong with giving the female principle an opportunity? And I say, let's get out of this room. It's having a torturous effect on our relationship. Look, Sonia, I'm sorry if I ruffled your feathers down there. I just, um, you know, I'm, I'm a failed husband, so I'm a little too sensitive about all that stuff. I'm also a starving poet and a bad teacher. And Jack here is another midlife casualty, except that his wife is still around. I don't know, maybe there's a connection in there somewhere for you. What do you do? I mean, what brings you to this far out and remote place? Well, let's see. Um... I'm a scientist, still, even though I'm on a semi-permanent sabbatical. How come? I got tired of seeing my work fed to the U.S. Defense Department. I'm a physicist, the only woman in my graduate department, the first in Norway doing quantum field theory. My uh, speciality was lasers. At that time, the challenge was to design lasers of ever shorter wavelengths. The shorter the wavelength, the more powerful, the laser. Our ultimate goal was to create an X-ray laser. And one day, um, I hit upon an unusual idea, which, as it turned out, led to a major advance in that X-ray laser. Well, when you do something like that, science treats you very well. I got many attractive offers, first from Paris and then from the States, and I took them, finally working quite happily in Boston. Until one day, I discovered totally unexpectedly that my work was being perverted. 
Sí. 